So, we last time we concluded with uh, Nash's theorem on the existence of a Nash equilibrium. Uh, I will just mention um, a generalization of it which basically follows from the same proof ideas that we had, we used for our earlier theorem. So, the generalization is essentially the, uh, a generalization in the strategy space. So, now suppose I give you a game like this, you have n players, this is your set of players okay. 1 to n. Earlier we have we were taking that each player has finitely many strategies. So, now I am going to allow for infinitely many strategies for the player. So, the strategy set of player i is, is a subset now of some uh, Euclidean space R m i ok. And No, this is just uh, I am just continuing from before. So, we are and uh, the utility uh, the um, cost of player i is is a is a function again from the product of the strategy spaces to r. Now, the here now what we have here is that uh, this could importantly this strategy set here could in, could be could actually be infinite. So, in, in the sense that so earlier the strategies of, of players were simply there are just finitely many strategies for each player. So, there were rows or columns of a matrix or something like that. So, but uh, but now we are we can allow for infinitely many strategies. So, this could be any subset of R, R M I. Now, what we we can define an Nash equilibrium in the usual sense uh, that so, you an x 1 star to x n star is a is a Nash equilibrium if u i of x i x i star comma x minus i star is less than equal to u i of x i comma x minus i star for all x i in S i and uh, for all i in n. This is our definition of a Nash equilibrium. So, uh, the question is when does a Nash equilibrium exist for a game like this. So, here we are talking of a Nash equilibrium in in the space in this strategy space in the set in the space S i that means these now are the pure strategies of player i. But the but the player has infinitely many pure strategies ok. So, it is a continuum of pure strategies. So, question is when does a Nash equilibrium exist and uh, it turns out that you can actually claim the, the existence of a Nash equilibrium for this kind of a game or uh, pretty much using the same arguments that we used for a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies, but with when you had finitely many pure strategies right. So, remember the set of mixed strategies is also infinite. Okay, so, when we got a Nash equilibrium in the space of mixed strategies, we were again talking of a game where the, there were infinitely many strategies for the player. So, the interesting thing here is that the pure strategies are infinite and when you have when certain assumptions hold actually a Nash equilibrium exists in pure strategies itself. Okay, so, that is uh, that is that is the theorem that I will I will write out here ok. Now, so, the theorem is this. So, suppose S i is convex, closed and bounded for each i in n and uh, suppose u i ok, u i I am going to view u i as a function of x i for each x minus i. So, u i of x i comma x minus i is continuous in x i comma x minus i and strictly convex in x i for each 
fixed x minus i. So, that means u i is is a continuous function of both these variables ok. For both these variables it is a continuous function and if you view it as a function of only x i then it is actually a strictly convex function of x i for each value of x minus i ok and this is true for all i for, for every player i ok. Then there exists a Nash equilibrium for this game. Then there exists a Nash equilibrium for this game. The main, the main, uh, so you can see we have, we, what we have done is we have assumed some things that are similar to what we did, uh, what we had earlier. The strategy set is now still convex, closed and bounded just like it was when we looked at the set of mixed strategies. So, the set of mixed strategies was uh, for a pure, uh, for a finite, uh, for a game uh, with finitely many pure strategies. The set of mixed strategies was also closed, convex and bounded. When you looked at the expected util, um, uh, cost or expected utility of the player, that uh, there was linear in, in the player's own pure strategy. So, now that has been generalized and we are, uh, we are asking that it is continuous in these variables, in all these variables and it is strictly convex in x i for each x minus i ok. So, that uh, so, the these the, the assumptions here are slightly different, but the are the arguments are uh, that uh, that we will need are more or less the same. So, what we what we need here is a actually you can say something like a more specific version of of Kakutani which is which is actually attributed to so, it is an earlier version. So, attributed to a uh, uh, mathematician called Brouwer. So, it is what is called Brouwer's fixed point theorem. So, Brouwer's fixed point theorem is essentially says this. So, if so, if you have a set S subset of R n which is closed convex and bounded and f which maps s to s is continuous then there exists an x star x star in s such that f of x star is equal to x star. So, this you I am sure you have seen this in you know and some earlier um, uh, part of your somewhere earlier in your life you would have seen this. So, uh, you let us look at a very very simple version of this. So, suppose you have a, a just an interval from 0 to 1 here ok and you have a continuous function that maps this 0 1 to 0 1. The question is can this can you have a continuous function that maps 0 1 to 0 1, but the function misses the, the 45 degree diagonal it is that is just not possible. So, you would have studied this in the you know you have many ways of proving this for in when the interval when the function when the set s is 0 uh, is just the interval 0 1. So, when the set s is the interval 0 1 and you have just some continuous function you would have probably proved this using Rolle's theorem or intermediate value theorem or something like that right. Uh, so, the uh, the, uh, the 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 so a, a, a much more general version of the same thing is Brouwer's fixed point theorem. So, Brouwer's fixed point theorem is essentially saying that in, in uh, is generalizing this by saying the set s is now not just 0 1 it is it is any closed convex and bounded set in R n in n dimensions ok. The function is something that maps the set to itself ok. So, it maps f uh, uh, it maps s to s, but in and the function is continuous. If the function is continuous the set has this uh, is closed convex and bounded then it will always have a fixed point ok. So, now what we want to do is we just we will what we will do is we will use this theorem to to prove prove this existence of a Nash equilibrium in this setting. And it is not very hard, so we can just quickly go through the 
go through the argument ok. So, I will just sketch out the proof for using uh, for the existence of Nash equilibrium. So, as before let us look at the best response. So, the best response of player i when others play x minus i. So, this is so the player is looking to minimize u i. So, it is those so, this is going to be those x i's or let us say x i stars uh, x i in s i such that playing x i is better than playing x i dash for all x i dash. Right. So, these are the so when others are playing x minus i this is what the player would respond with. Now, when we did Kakutani's when we applied Kakutani's fixed point theorem what was our main observation that we our observation was that this could in general be a set right when when he when the others were playing a mixed strategy a player could have multiple pure strategy best responses and therefore, therefore the set of mixed strategy responses could in general be uh, could could be a set. So, it could be an infinite set there could be infinitely many best responses. So, when we were when we were looking at the Kakutani's fixed point theorem, we wrote out a similar set over there the, the best response and that set was in general you would have more than one element in right. In, so, we said we found that if uh, in fact what the what happens is that the other players mixed strategies become are chosen in such a way that a player becomes indifferent between several pure strategies of his own. And when he is uh, indifferent between two or more pure strategies, any combination of those pure strategies is also a best response, any mixed combination of those. So, this uh, so all of so the, this so the set of best responses then is in for the those kind of games is a set. Now, but if you look at this here, we, we have made some very specific assumptions, right? We have we've assumed that ui is continuous and strictly convex in xi for each x minus i, right. So, what happens as a result of that? So, if you as a result of that what you see is see the x what are these x i's? These x i's here are those that minimize. So, this is actually the same as the minimizers of this optimization. It is the minimizers of u i of x i with x minus i fixed right. So, when you minimize this over over x i the the minimizers that you get those are your best responses. Now, what did we assume about about u i? We assume that u i is actually strictly convex in x i for each x minus i right. So, and we assumed also that s i is a is a closed convex and bounded set. Right. So, therefore, this problem if you just look at this this problem here this problem that I have underlined this problem is actually a convex optimization problem right because you are minimizing a convex function for a fixed x minus i you are minimizing a convex function over a convex set. In fact, you are minimizing a strictly convex function. Now, what is a strictly convex function? A strictly convex function is one so a function f is convex. if for all x comma y f and uh, for all lambda in 0 comma 1 f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than equal to lambda f x plus 1 minus lambda f of y. So, this is the definition of, uh, of a convex function. So, f is strictly convex if x not equal to y and lambda between 0 and 1 f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda times y is strictly less 
tan lambda f x plus 1 minus lambda f y. So, which means that the function if you take the convex if you evaluate the function at a convex combination of two points you get a value that is strictly less than the convex combinations of the function values itself right. So, a, a convex function can have a flat bottom like this this kind of a function is also convex, but a strictly convex function cannot. So, because because it is a it has a flat bottom like this what what you would have is you could have two points here having uh, you know uh, you take. So, suppose this is a point x this is a point y you take lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y and evaluate evaluate f at that at that point it turns out to be exactly equal to la lambda f x plus 1 minus lambda f y ok. That is because the function over there is uh, uh, on that segment is linear, but a strictly convex function will not have such regions. So, a strictly convex function will always have something like it will look something like this that there will never be any sort of flat flat region in that uh, along any direction that you look at ok. Now, what what it means is that once a function is strictly convex and you are minimizing it over a convex set what this the implication of that is that this that kind of a problem a convex optimization problem with a strictly convex objective over a convex set that optimization problem will have a unique solution. So, this argmin then is going to be actually not a set, but a unique point right. So, this here is the argmin is going to be unique. Now, because whence this argmin is unique, then R R i is not a set valued map, but just a function of x minus i. Okay, so then this becomes a function of x minus i. Is this clear? So, so now what we can do is we can then again as before define R of x as R one of x minus one all the way till r n of x minus n and this is essentially what you are doing is just taking co components of uh, uh, stacking up the uh, these n different functions you have r 1 is one function r 2 is another function etcetera you just stack them up and what you get now is r which is a function then from s to s where s is simply the the product of the strategy spaces. Now, it just like we did for in the in our in our previous proof you can also now show that r. So, earlier in our previous proof we showed that r must have a closed graph the best response set has a closed graph. So, the closed graph in uh, uh, th exact same argument will apply here, but if instead of getting a closed graph what you will get is that the function r itself is continuous. So, the graph being closed will basically mean that if you take a if you take a sequence of points uh, uh, if you if you take a sequence of x minus i is converging to a point then r of x minus i will converge to the r of that uh, r i of that point. So, so in using the same arguments as before same arguments as before. You can show that that R is actually continuous. So, so if you can you can check that the exact same arguments will continue to apply. So, R it actually shows that R is continuous and when R is continuous what we what we have then is that R is a continuous function it is a function from s to s and s remember we assumed is is convex closed and bounded. Which means then by Brouwer's fixed point theorem by Brouwer's fixed point theorem there exists an x star such that x star is equal to r of x star. 
which means that there is a there exists a Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, in other words what ha happened is now we started off with a game in which there were infinitely many pure strategies and we got a Nash equilibrium, uh, but, but with some more structure on the u. We had to assume that the strategy space was convex and compact, we had to assume that u is continuous, continuous and, con uh, and strictly convex and in that case we get a we, we get that there is a, uh, a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. Okay. We do not have to move to mixed strategies in this uh, in this domain. So, so the in in the case when the, the number of strategies was finite, there was a problem in in uh, and that is why that is where we had to go towards mixed strategies. So, of course, there is a notion you might ask of course, is, is there a notion of mixed strategies even when you have infinitely many pure strategies. So, there is such a notion as well. So, you can allow for randomization even when there are infinitely many pure strategies. So, then what you have to what each player is then choosing is a basically a probability distribution again on his pure strategies. So, he is looking for he is choosing a basically a PDF probability density function on his space of pure strategies ok or more generally a measure on his uh, space of pure strategies ok. But all that is a technical generalization if you um, uh, but, the, but the main thing I wanted you to know is that if you the whether there exists an Nash equilibrium or not is essentially a topological property. It has it is about the shape of this of this function r and how it whether it you know has the right shape to eventually that it has to intersect that 45 degree line in the in that larger space ok. So, in particular way when you when you are dealing with pure strategies on a uh, on a close uh, on a close compact co convex and compact set with the right sort of u uh, you actually have the property that you uh, that you require ok. So, so this was uh, this is the uh, this, this is all I had to say about this particular topic.